Could the expected economic rebound come up short? Is it time to follow Buffett's mentor and invest in China and his transurban dudded investors? I'm Peter Switzer, he's Paul Ricard, and we're mad about money. Paul? Could the expected rebound come up short, Paul? What do you reckon? Well, interesting, the OECD, Peter's cut its growth forecast, but uh, I'm not sure we should get too worried about that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think what we're going on at the moment, Peter, is, uh, of course, we're getting to see a lot of supply disruptions, at least fears about supply disruptions and uh, the impact on inflation. So I'm not sure where um, it's going to cut the rebound short, Peter, but there seems to be just a bit more concern, and that's probably why the market's probably more so in overseas than they are in Australia, Peter, are just seem a little bit on hold and I just think it's part of the September, October bit of news we go through. Yeah, and I, I think the interesting thing also is, Paul, that we actually could be advantaged by the fact that we're kind of behind the rest of the world because of all these lockdowns and whatever. And, and we saw this week in Sydney, there's been a, a massive re rebound in spending. But because we are behind, a lot of the supply problems that Europe, the UK and the US are currently experiencing could well be sorted out by the time we really get into the strong rebound economic expansion of 2022. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on that. And maybe, as I say, the rest of the world is a little bit ahead of us now because of the lockdowns. And it may work in, in the end work out to our advantage that countries like China, where we get a lot of our inputs uh, for production or whatever, may, they may well sort out their problems by the time we really have big demand. In the short term, Paul, I think the spending is going to be local. It's going to be local holidaying, local restaurants and cafes and bars and things like that. So I think that's going to get us through until probably Christmas. I hope then that we can overcome the shortage problems after that. Now let's go to the other big issue. Um, an interesting story, uh, Warren Buffett's mentor and, and buddy is Charlie Munger. And uh, his uh, company, another company he's associated with, have doubled down on their investment on Alibaba. And it's asked, asked, made me ask the question, is it time to sort of forgive China and start investing there again? I'm not sure we want to forgive them too much, Peter, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the share price of stocks like Alibaba, Tencent uh, and others have been pretty hard to hit this, this year there. At one stage, Alibaba, I think, was down about 45% from its high. Uh, a little bit of rebound in the last couple of days and, and, and good old Charlie's shown a bit of a lead in the company that he chairs has taken a, big, a reasonably big stake. Um, interesting play, Peter. I mean, you've still got the political risk up in China. I think... Uh, you know, clearly they're doing a lot of things around their economy ahead of both the uh, the summit in Glasgow and also the Olympics uh, next February. Uh, and, I, and I think that they, you know, they, they sort of tolerate capitalism, but occasionally they need to teach a few people a lesson, but let's not do it too hard because we don't really want to change the economic status too much. Uh, so I guess a, a courageous play, a courageous note from you, Peter, was to think about investing in China. Don't think I'm quite there, but I can see why uh, very smart people like uh, Charlie Munger might be looking at it quite seriously. Yeah, and, and Buffett, of course, is famous for the old line, you know, when everybody's fearful, be greedy, and Charlie's obviously doing that. And I, I guess the bottom line is, it's a very risky investment, but a lot of risky investments do pay off. We know um, that very good fund manager, Hamish Douglas, has had a big exposure to companies like Alibaba, um, and his, his fund has suffered as a consequence of it. But, you know, th these guys don't, you know, remain wrong for too long. And, he, he, you know, he may well be advantaged by the fact that China eventually goes soft on the companies they've been punishing in recent times, and we could see a, a rebound. Another way of playing it is, you know, either you buy uh, Magellan or you actually buy an ETF called Asia, which gives you all of those companies uh, as well as other ones. But once again, we will emphasise it is a risky play, but it could be rewarding. Let's yeah, go. I mean, I think the Asia play, it's the stock code for the fund uh, from beta shares, had a great run until the market sort of bub bubbled over it. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a way, I think it has about 10 or 12 uh, companies up in the, in the, in China or the Asian area, including companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, which of course is not in China, but of course uh, is the <laughs> largest semiconductor manufacturer in the world, but a way to play the Asian market. Uh, and maybe that's a better way to do it. So uh, had a great run in the last couple of years, a big sell off, maybe there's some value there, but uh, you know, higher risk as you say, Peter. 
Yeah, it, start, it start, has started to move this week. Paul, let's go to the one that you think is a big story, is that you reckon Transurban has dudded investors. Well, I'm not sure it's dudded investors. That might have been a little bit too, uh, <laughs> too provocative, Peter, to, to get a headline. But interesting enough today, Transurban's announced the, the uh, results of the retail, the, the, the shortfall from their entitlement issue. Now, they did a one for nine capital raising at $13 a share. Uh, and shareholders essentially had three choices, Peter. First of all, was to take up their rights, and about, uh, about two thirds of retail shareholders did that. The second choice was to sell those rights on the marketplace. They traded on the ASX under the code uh, TCLR, that, that's now ceased, uh, and they traded as high as about $1.15. Or thirdly, do nothing. Well, the do nothing option, option they auctioned those entitlements off, and they're going to get the princely sum of 30 cents. So it does sort of show the reasons why you need to act when you get an entitled issue. You do something, never leave it to the last moment because you could have potentially sold those entitlements for about $1.15 or alternatively, you know, had a lot of other opportunities to actually take up the shares. So the shares are trading well above the 30 cents that institutions paid for them last night. So the moral of the story, I'm not criticising Transurban apart from it was a very short process that shareholders had to find the money in. But the moral of the story is when there's an entitlement issue, you're better off to do something than not do anything. And but Paul, it was a pretty short window, wasn't it, compared to, say, CBA and, and uh, Woolworths with their buyback? Yeah, very short window indeed, Peter. In fact, it was less than two weeks uh, to actually front up for the money and only a week's uh, trading of the entitlement. So very short period. Good for Transurban, not necessarily so good for some of the retail shareholders. Okay, well, I'm Peter Switzer, he's Paul Rickard, and we're mad about money. Shh.